Hey guys, good morning to everyone and thanks for joining. So yesterday we started vulnerability management. So we not not started yet. So just I give in definitions like what is vulnerability, what is threat and what is risk. So today we will continue once again vulnerability management. So before going to vulnerability management, uh, first I will explain about vulnerability assessment. So vulnerability assessment. So this vulnerability assessment, whenever we are referring or vulnerability management, whenever we are referring, it's mainly for server scanning, running these servers and identifying the vulnerabilities or weakness and providing patch updates. That is called vulnerability management. Okay, so vulnerability assessment meaning here. So running the vulnerability scans. And identifying the vulnerabilities. To the servers. And patching those vulnerabilities. So we have to run the server scanning part and we have to identify the vulnerabilities and even we have to do the patch updates, but patch update is not part of our job. What is our job as a vulnerability analyst? What is the designation basically? So it's a vulnerability as a uh, vulnerability analyst. Otherwise some of the organizations, they will call it as a L1, L2, L3, even in the vulnerability management also. Okay, so here running this, server scanning part and identifying the vulnerability vulnerabilities, nothing but weaknesses in the respective servers dedicated to in the server level and patching the vulnerability, patching the vulnerabilities who will do patching the vulnerabilities will be done by server team. Whoever asset owner, server owner, business owner will be there. Those people, they will take care. Otherwise we will call it as a windows team and Linux team. Patch updates will be done by windows and Linux team. And what is our job? So our job is completely running these scans and identifying the vulnerabilities. That is our job. Okay. So vulnerability assessment meaning here, running, running the vulnerability scanning and identifying the vulnerabilities. So where we will identify the vulnerabilities? Servers. Okay. So next one is vulnerability management. Running the multiple are managing otherwise managing multiple vulnerability assessment scans and identify managing and identifying vulnerabilities managing multiple vulnerability assessment okay here managing multiple See, vulnerability assessment may be single scan, but enter managing of all the server scan and identifying the vulnerabilities, that is called vulnerability management. It's not only for a single team, so like a multiple teams, multiple teams, okay, managing the multiple vulnerability assessment scans and identifying the vulnerabilities and patching those vulnerabilities is called vulnerability management. Okay. So, Every organization contain couple of teams. Okay, so those teams are, it's not a mandatory generic way I'm explaining. Every organization contains multiple teams like, example, maybe DevOps team, they have DevOps servers. So maybe machine learning team or artificial intelligence or data analytics team or middleware team, or my web servers, or database servers, finance servers, okay, Windows, Linux. So according to the organization requirement, these are all the business verticals. So it will vary from organization to organization, which type of business they are doing. Example, if they are doing the healthcare related business, in that scenario, there most of the servers related to application development related. In this similar banking sector project or banking sector related 
business. In that scenario, most of their servers related to finance servers. So this is a generic example, DevOps team, tech ops team, sec ops team, machine learning team, content development team, product development team, application development team, every organization contain. So these are all the different types of teams. Okay, so we have to identify the servers and after that we have to run these scans. Okay, so these are all example of the couple of servers, couple of teams otherwise, couple of teams, every organization contains. Now, vulnerability management process. So what exactly we have to follow vulnerability management process. First thing is, if you want to run these scans, first thing is we need servers information. We need server information. How we can identify the server's information? Anyone, how can we identify server information? Business owners from business owners. Excellent. So we have to contact the business owner. So we have to contact the business owner and we have to ask, so how, what are the servers are available? So contact the business owner. So business owner also call it as asset owner. This is also called a server owner. Contact the business owner or server owner or asset owner and identify the servers. So that's the first step we have to do. And after that, For this one, couple of organizations, they will use uh, tools also. For managing all the servers, they will use asset inventory tool. So they will use asset inventory tool. So asset inventory tools, example, we have HP, one of the tool is available. In the similar way, most popular tool is CMDB, Configuration Management Database. It's one of the tool. In the similar, even service now also, we can make sure we can make sure that uh, survey, all the servers are, uh, we can store, otherwise we can uh, save. Okay, so example, HP CMDB service now. Service now, it's not only for just a ticketing tool, even we can make sure that knowledge base, and also even we can configure or even we can save our servers or assets as well. Okay, so example tools are HP CMDB service now. In this one, directly we can go and we can take based on the team wise. So each and every server name along with what is the group name, group name is the team name, server name, group name, IP address, whether it is a physical server or virtual server, nothing but yesterday we discussed, right, VMware or Oracle virtual box and so on. And where it is located, what is the status of the server? So whether it's shutdown status, or whether it is the active and online status or whether decommissioned status and so on. So we have to identify the server state, server owner. And so once you are logging to the respective tool, so then you can get the entire information. Okay, so these are all example tools. Couple of people, they will use even Excel sheets as well. And Excel sheets. So that is the identifying the server's information. Later, take the approval from server owner. So what approval we have to take? We have, when I have to run this scan? When shall I run this scan? Date and time we have to identify. Okay, so take the approval from server owner. So date and time, when I have to run these scans? So that is the third steps, sorry, second step. And after that, what we have to do, create a scan policy. So scan policy where we have to create. So before going to this one, log into respect to, log into scanning tool. So scanning tool, we have to log in. That may be anything. So that may be Nessus or Qualys or Rapid7, all these are all the different types of tools and so on. Whatever you are using in your organization level, so we have to log into the respective tool. Next one, 
create a scan policy create a scan policy So after logging to tool, what we have to do, we have to create a scan policy. In this scan policy, we have to choose the scan template. Choose the scan template. Which type of template? So there are more than 30 templates by default, every vendor is supporting. We have to choose the respective template. And we have to specify the rule policy name. We have to specify the hardening benchmark. Nothing but compliances. Even we have to provide the credentials as well. So that's detail. This one I will show you practically. So create a scan policy. We have to create a scan policy in the tool. And after that, we have to create a scan rule. Create a scan rule. And where we have to create scan rule, same thing in tool itself. And after that, schedule the scan. So scheduling these scans is also called ad hoc scan. Ad hoc or schedule both are same only. Example, monthly ones I want to run these scans. Every month 30th, I want to run this scan at midnight, maybe 12 o'clock. Most of the cases we will run these scans off peak hours. Off peak hours meaning here, whenever the employees are not working. So that time we, we have to run these scans. So why? Because when you are running the scans, that servers will not respond properly. On top of the servers, whatever applications are running on, those applications also, issues will occur. It will not respond properly. Okay. So finally, end users will get impact. So that's why most of the cases we will run, we will inform to the respective server owner, we are running the scans. That's why the second step is take date and time. So when we have to run this scan, so whatever time and date he provided, so that particular date and time we have to run these scans. Schedule these scans. Next one. So once scan is completed, scheduling meaning for example, as I said, monthly ones. So 30th of the every month, automatically scan will be completed. Generate the reports. So in two formats, normally we will generate the repeat. One is Excel format and PDF format. So Excel directly it is now it's not supporting. First, we have to generate in CSV format. From that CSV format, we have to convert it to Excel format. That I will show you practically. So and after that, what we have to do is we have to do the manual analysis. This is very important. So generating the running the scans and generating the reports, it is easy only. So everybody can do it. But analyzing the reports, this is very important. Manually, we have to analyze the reports. Analyze the reports manually. Okay, so based on what? Risk assessment and business impact analysis, BIA. BIA means business impact analysis. So, what are vulnerabilities it is identified after generating the reports? Is there any business impact based on the confidentiality wise, based on the integrity wise, based on the availability wise? So is there, because of this particular vulnerability, is there any impact will be there? So we have to identify the, what is the risk is involved from the attacker point of view. Attacker will enter into organization and whether he will take any critical data or sensitive data, or maybe he will ask either money or blackmail the money in the similar way. So whether is there any confidentiality wise, integrity wise and availability wise, is there any outage or impact will be there? That one, we have to go to each and every vulnerability and we have to analyze. So this is very important guys. It's not like a running this scan and throwing those reports to respect to server owners. It's not like that. So oh, we so have to analyze. Yes, uh, please. Sorry for interrupting. Yes, please. Uh, sir, you said that uh, 
uh, like report manually. So, uh, well, we do that in the service no portal or like, do we have any separate tools for it to do no. the respective reporting? Uh, so do you mean reports? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So report is complete excellent PDF only. Uh, fine, sir. Yeah, thank you. Got so it. we have to analyze manually. So and everything we have to go to the I will show you practically how we have to do manual analysis. So reporting tools we having like Power BI and tablets. So Power BI. Yes, understood. You are right. But currently in the vulnerability assessment and management side, currently we are not using any Power BI or any other tools. Everything we are doing manually, maybe in future they will integrate with Power BI tools as well. Fine, sir. Got it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So the next one, after analyzing the reports, what we have to do, filter out based on the severity wise. Filter out based on severity. So severity, there are a different types of severity levels. One is a critical. Next one is a high, medium, low, and info. Vendor to vendor, it will vary. So Nessus tool will provide a critical, high, medium, low, and informational. But Qualys will provide 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5 meaning critical, 4 means high. So 3 means medium, and 2 means 1. And informational is nothing but none. It's like 1, 0. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, sorry, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Qualys will provide 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nessus will provide critical, high, medium, low, and informational. Rapid7 or Nexpose also will provide critical, high, medium, low, and informational, and so on. So filter out based on CVRT. First thing is, obviously, we have to prioritize CVRT1, nothing but priority one, critical vulnerabilities. So it's better to raise a separate ticket for critical one, separate ticket for high, separate ticket for medium and low and informational. For tracking-wise, it is easy. OK. So raise a ticket with. Raise a ticket with respect to business owners. So whatever team server scan see how done. So all those we we have to raise a ticket for everything, even if you want VPN access, if you want something. So always, as I said, we have to raise a ticket. So dependency, whenever any dependency is there with the other teams, obviously we have to raise a ticket. So raise a ticket with the respect to business teams or business owners. So in this scenario, most of the cases and most of the organizations, uh, Windows and Linux team, they, are, they will do the patch updates. Otherwise you can raise directly to business owner. He will forward it to the respect to Windows and Linux team who we are doing the support. So later, what we have to do, they will take care of the patch updates. So Windows and Linux team will do the patch updates. So what is our last thing is after doing the patch updates. So we have to rerun the scans. So rerun the scans, why we have to do rerun, meaning it once again, we have to run the scans. So once they complete the patch updates, patch updates will be taken care of by Windows and Linux team or otherwise business owners itself. After doing the patch updates, we have to rerun the scans, meaning here, whether all the patch updates, whatever they have done, whether it is patched or not. First of all, what is in by patching? Patching. So patching is uh, fixing the issue or otherwise upgrading the software versions. So every server contains different types of libraries or packages. I will show you practically. So every server contains different type of packages as well as libraries. Third party softwares are different. I'm not speaking about TPS. TPS is different. TPS means third party softwares that may be either open source or commercial. Here I am speaking whatever it is installed in the server only. In the server level, 
there are a lot of packages and libraries it will be installed by the respective server owner or server team so we have to keep on updating those patches otherwise our server has a more risk is involved okay so this type of attacks sometimes will will uh, lead to even zero day as well okay so fixing the issue or upgrading the software versions so that is called patching okay so now couple of definitions i will explain next one scanning mechanisms okay scanning mechanism here what are the different scanning mechanisms we can do we can do authenticated and second one is unauthenticated authenticated meaning here so providing the credential at the time of scanning into server so credentials providing so meaning here username and password so if you are providing the credential scanning then only it can provide the full vulnerabilities list full vulnerabilities list so if it is windows what is the highest privilege what is the highest privilege for a windows windows server admin. admin what about linux sudo or uh, root kit root kit root, 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 root not kit root so highest privilege in linux is a root and windows it is a admin so how can we how we will come to know these username and password you are not a server owner you are not a part of server team so then where we can get these credentials we have to ask even credentials respect to server owner okay so we have to educate and we have to give awareness if you are providing the respective admin or root then only we will get the full vulnerabilities list otherwise we will not get the full vulnerabilities list authenticated scanning meaning here so providing the credentials so which type of credentials we have to provide highest privilege in the server so highest privilege if it is a windows it's admin and if it is a unix it is a root okay so unauthenticated scans meaning here without providing any credentials but it is not recommended one without providing any credentials but it is not a recommended one always it's better to use authenticated only credentials mechanism next one is scanning types uh, sir uh... For this authenticated uh, scanning, uh, the credentials what we are using in case of Windows. So, mm -hmm. which uh, credential? Like, is it uh, some particular server's credential? Or... Yes, it is server credentials only. Because we are running the scans to server, we have to ask server owner so username and password, and they will provide the username and password. Okay, so since there are multiple servers, so mm -hmm. uh, the admin credential would be. Same for all the uh, servers. No, it is not a mandatory for all the servers should have the same username and password. You are right. In that scenario, whatever common username and password it is there, those servers we have to create one policy. For other servers, we have to use a different thing. No, oh, okay. Thank you. Clear, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Scanning types. So scanning types, mainly two types we have. One is a horizontal scan. Second one is a vertical scan. Scanning types, we have two types mainly. One is horizontal and one is vertical scans. So a couple of people here, most of the people, they will confuse here. So what is meant by horizontal and what is meant by vertical? Not only this one. See, here I am saying to you, scanning mechanisms. It's not a mandatory okay so other people also will use a scanning mechanism you understood right maybe i'm using a terminal the scanning mechanism other people they'll say which type of scanning he will do so which type of scanning he will do in such levels they will ask authenticated scans you have to provide authenticated scans so coming to what is the mean by horizontal scanning types we have horizontal and vertical So this is one of the 
cap gem inter equation guys if you are going for cap gem they will ask this question horizontal and vertical differences so horizontal meaning here for multiple ips we have to take and we have to run this scan single port so that is called horizontal vertical meaning here so one server you can take and you can run against multiple ports that is vertical so for multiple server here multiple servers against single port multiple servers you can take you can run against a single port that is called horizontal okay example 10.10.10.1 10.10.10.2 10.10.10.3 10.10.10.4 10.10.10.5 and so on so these are all multiple servers and we have to see whether port number 80 is open or whether we have to see whether port number 445 is open so that is called horizontal scan then what is vertical scan opposite to this one take a single server run against multiple ports so that is called vertical how many ports we have how many ports we have at 6536 65,000 uh, 536. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 65,000 536. You are right. So one one server we have to take and we have to run entire server. So one server we have to take entire server we have to run against the ports. So in this scenario, we'll come to know how many ports are open, how many ports are closed. What the command if you want to see manually using command prompt. what are the ports are open what are the ports are it is listening net stat you are right so net stat is a command okay so horizontal meaning here multiple server against a single port that is on the horizontal scanning vertical scanning take a single server run against multiple ports okay it is also called a port scanning basically multiple ports is nothing but port scanning okay so scanning what are the different types of scans we will do different types of scans so we have os scan this is also called server scan other the firmware scan port scan network scan application scan malware scan so these are the couple of scans oa scans nothing but entire server scanning that is a part of vulnerability management so vulnerability management meaning here this one only running the scans vulnerability port scan dedicatedly identifying the ports it's entire question guys what in my port scanning entire question what in my port scanning so running the server and identifying what are all the ports are open and is there any risky ports are open so if are if you'll come to know what are the ports are open obviously so you know what are the ports are closed so and identifying the if there is a risky port so that is port scanning so sir, exam port dog number dog, sir. sorry single dog sir any yes. port if it is open it is a risk only na sir opening port is one of the risk condition na sir yeah port number 80 so for part it is not a risk right so mandatory so net bias is not okay. a mandatory yes Okay, okay. SMTP yeah. port number twenty five is not a mandatory. Our so, this, uh, if any other ports are open, yes, then it that, comes to the risk. Yes, that's correct. Right. Okay, sir. So you. that's called port scanning. It's entire equation, guys. What is meant by port scanning? They will ask. This is the entire equation. So server scanning, entire server scanning is like nothing but OS scans. Enter OS. We will run these scans, and we will see is there any libraries or packages are outdated. And network scan. 
network scanning meaning here so is there any networking related like a certificates and also expiry of the certificates then even we can do malware scanning network scan is a part of malware as well i will show you practically all this application scan application scan we have separate tools are available part of application security there we can discuss more example code scan okay even uh, dast sast and dast static application security testing and dynamic application security testing it's a part of application security this one but even though it is a part of application security nowadays whoever tools or vendors are available in the market like example nessus or qualis or rapid7 and so on they are supporting to application scanning as well we have to take the url and we have to identify what all the bugs are available in the application level so these tools will support even application level also example we have to take www.facebook.com that url link we have to take and we have to go to the application scan policy so then we have to run this scan and we have to see what all the bugs are available or what are the issues are available that is called application scan so this i will show you practically all these thing in a single scan we can enable all these even brute force attack scan we can do even we can do scada scan we can do scada scada is one type of civil electrical mechanical related ics in this still controlled system so those things i will show you practically all these different types of scans next one is a cve id so cve id is a common vulnerability exposer common vulnerability exposer so what is cve id basically common vulnerability exposer for every vulnerability it is a unique id number so that id number we will call it as a cve id okay so example zero day attack it's a cve 2021 44228 so for every vulnerability it has a unique id number will be there those id numbers will call it a cv id it's a common vulnerability exposer in future we can discuss about cwe so common weakness exploitation cwe common weakness exploitation or exposer so this is for os top 10 so os top 10 it's a application security related attacks okay so for every application layer attack a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 a9 a10 all these are os top 10 a a means here application 1 application 2 application 3 and so on there we will use a cwe term and in the server scan we will use a cve so it is a unique id number provided to each and every vulnerability so that is cve cvid so example CVE twenty twenty one double four double two eight. It's a zero day attack. In such a way, for every attack, one vulnerability number will be there. So that is called CVE ID. It's a common vulnerability exposure. It is enter equation. So CWE will not discuss here. It is a part of application security, application layer attacks. okay common weakness exploitation or exposers that is cwe okay so example a1 if you want take the example a1 a1 meaning here application attack number 1 broken access control what is mean by this one i will show you practically wsp we have separate topic is there anyway
you can see here a01 a02 a03 a04 a05 and so on right so here broken access control is a1 so this is the cwe in the application side we will use a cwe you can see a cwe in server side we will use cve okay so these two are inter equations so this is the cve and cwe so next one we have cvss score so inter equation once again this one everything is inter equation only whatever i am explaining now everything is inter equation so cve full form is common vulnerability scoring system common vulnerability scoring system so this range is a 0 to 10 scale range 0 to 10 scale is range cvss score common vulnerability scoring system it is a 0 to 10 scale range according to, for every vulnerability whenever we are running this scan it will identify and it will generate one of the number that number we will call it as a cvss score okay example 9 to 10 so it is a critical cvss score 9 to 10 so current version of the cvss score is cvss version 3 or cvss base score version 3 okay 9 to 10 is a critical and 7 to 9 score is a high so next one is 5 to 7 it is a medium next one is below 4 or below 5 So below five, it's a low and informational. So these are all the different types of severity levels normally we will use. So critical, high, medium, low and informational. So CVSS full form is common vulnerability scoring system. It is at zero to 10 scale range. So current version. So what are the different types of versions we have? CVSS versions. So there are three versions, CVSS1, CVSS2, CVSS base 3. So current version is base 3. Always we have to consider range of the or score is based on CVSS base 3. It's a latest version. Okay. So whatever we are discussing here severity wise it should be based on cvss base 3 version okay so that is about cvss score it's an entire question once again next one we have who are all the vendors maintaining these vulnerabilities Who are all the vendors maintaining these vulnerabilities? So first one is an NVD database, National Vulnerability Database. Whenever any vulnerability it will come, first thing is they will maintain in the database. National Vulnerability Database. Second one is uh, Mitri Framework or Mitri Database. So you know already Mitri Framework we discussed, right? Even Mitri organization is maintaining all the vulnerability related databases. Third one is uh, CVE, CVE database, common vulnerability exposure database. So these are all the three different types of vendors for every vulnerability, they will provide what is the score and what is the risk is involved. Okay. So next one is, okay, zero to 10 scale range we said, but how this range is coming or how tool is validating and how it is coming automatically. So whenever if you're running this scan, okay, example, we run this scan and we identified for one of the vulnerability, it is showing as a nine or it is showing that score is a 7.1 or 7.2 or maybe it is showing as 5.1 and 5.2. How that score is coming? How tool is calculating that one? So CVS score is based on
based on confidentiality integrity availability next one is uh, scope next one attack vector attack complexity next one we have user interaction so these are all the parameters it depends so how that score is coming for each and every vulnerability so it is based on the respective confidentiality so that vulnerability is exposing what level of the confidentiality privacy of the data okay so example maybe whenever any vulnerability issue it is coming or bug is coming in the server so what is the privacy of the data attacker can hack so that is confidentiality by score is generating integrity so what is the trustworthy of the data or is there any modifications attacker can do or he can update or he can delete or he can add or modify and so on availability is there any business impact or business outage or availability issues will be there scope so how the attacker scope of the work he will enter into the server level and attack vector so how he will choose the selection of the target and he will enter into organization level so that is attack vector what type of tactics and techniques and procedure attacker will use that is called attack vector attack complexity whether it is easily hackable or difficultly hackable so that is attack complexity wise user interaction whenever any attacker is exploiting the vulnerability is there any user access is required user has to download something or user has to do something or not so according to these parameters automatically it will validate for every vulnerability so cvss score will be generated along with the cv id number as well example cv id 2021 zero day attack score is 10 out of 10 so which type of severity is now this one which type of severity then this one critical yeah. yes critical severity that meaning here based on this one everything so confidentiality wise integrity wise availability wise so attacker can easily hackable and he can take the privacy of the data he can do the impact related to the servers or application and so on for every vulnerability cv id will be there cvs score will be there along with how that particular score will be generated based on these parameters. This is the back end process. Okay. Now coming back. So, what is hardening benchmark? Hardening benchmark. First of all, what is hardening? So, before going to hardening benchmark, what is hardening? So, hardening meaning here doing the initial setup and configuration related to security. After server is configured, after server is created, otherwise, after server is created, so doing initial security configurations. Doing initial security configurations and reducing the attack complexity or attack surface is called hardening. So after service is created, example, Windows team is created one of the server. So what is meant by hardening now? So whoever is managing the server, so we have to do initial security configurations. So why we have to do initial security configurations? Because we have to reduce the attack surface. What is the attack surface basically? Example, in our human body, so our critical body component, it is like a heart. In this similar way, attack surface, how attacker will compromise the server? What is the attack surface he will choose? So we are reducing that attack surface. That is called hardening. So most popular hardening benchmark across the universe or worldwide is a CIS.
so example compliances are all these are compliances basically example very popular one is cs benchmark center for internet security most of the organizations so they will use this benchmark only so what is cs center for internet security so second one is a dot stick compliances department of defense it's a dedicatedly applicable to navy army defense ministry of defense ministry of education and so on so department of defense compliances we have next one we have these are these two are from the usa this one is implemented by america so ansi is also very popular one this one is implemented by france or french france in this similar way singapore singapore compliances i forgot that name singapore compliances and so on so but across the universe very popular benchmark is these two these two is very popular benchmark so what is i'm saying benchmark benchmark what is exactly initial setup configurations we have to do so go here google go to google and just you can type cs downloads so click on this one now you can see here this center for internet security is an organization so they will provide for each and every system database application cloud as well they will provide benchmark you can see here sys benchmark for microsoft windows 10 version 1.0.0 in this similar debian linux server so in your organization level you are using debian as a unix operating system so then we have to download this one and we have to do all the initial setup configurations so all these compliances around 225 so file system configurations we have to do in this similar way network configurations we have to do services configurations we have to do next one we have to take a network configuration logging and monitoring configurations logging and auditing anjishan hello am i audible yes sir. sir okay sorry guys yes, sir. power has gone okay so these are all the configurations who will do so what job is not implementing all these configurations these configurations initial setup configurations will be done by respective windows team and linux team they will do then what is our job so there are more than 225 compliances we have so example file system configuration disable unused file systems under this one first comp first compliance is ensure mounting of file vxfs file system is disabled right now we are we are discussing about debian so debian is one of the operating system so in case in our organization level we are using debian operating system then it's better to implement it's not a mandatory to implement cs ordering benchmark but it's better to implement it will reduce the attack surface so click on this one so there are two types of controls level 1 and level 2 level 1 controls it's like a basic controls so if you are not implementing level 1 also it's attacker cannot compromise the system but it's better to implement both level 1 as well as level 2 you can see here this is applicable to server as well as workstation workstation debian unix operating system it is applicable to as well as server debian also it is applicable so now respect to debian team nothing but our linux team they will go and they will implement this one so everything they will provide what the description of the respect to benchmark or configuration and what is the exactly 
it will do and what is the audit audit meaning here our job so 225 compliances if you want to audit audit meaning here whether it is they implemented or not that is called audit so if you are if you are enabling or even though they everything they enabled or disabled or they did not they implemented or they did not implement so if you want to check everything it will take too much time manual analysis so that's why nowadays every tool water scanning tools we are using by default they are supporting all these complaints scanning so all these configurations will be done by respect to windows team and linux team then what is our role our role is make sure that whether 100% is complaint or not 100% it's impossible at least 90% is complaint or not out of 225 maybe 190 or 200 is a passed remaining 25 is a failed then it's fine because 100% it's impossible to implement why because if our implement in something server related issues will come or performance related issues will come configurations related issues will come application compatibility issues we also will come right so that's why so it's not a mandatory 100% we have to complain at least 90 plus we are complain that's sufficient what is our role as a vulnerability analyst so we have to make for that whether how much percent is our complaint if it is complaint 60% or 50% then we have to go and we have to say to the respect to windows team and linux team so out of 225 only 112 are complaint remaining 113 are not complaint so that scanning there is no need to do manual validation everything tool will provide okay if are implementing all these configurations then it will reduce the attack surface so that is called cs benchmark okay so very popular one is cs benchmark so this is not only applicable to debian you can see here ubuntu amazon linux centos linux oracle linux red hat enterprise linux and so on even it is applicable to windows as well well so microsoft sql server database so in our organization we are using microsoft Microsoft, then we have to implement this one. So, if are doing all this configuration, so hacker point of view can reduce the attack attack complexity, attack surface. He cannot enter into the server level. So, it is one of the hardening benchmark. So, yesterday we were discussing correct. Actually, I thought to say yesterday itself. So that time you don't know. So then that's why I did not say here. So how can we? prevent our server what we have to add implement a hardening benchmark implement hardening benchmark so this is also one of the very important point implement hardening benchmark so this is also we have to do configurations so which benchmark we have to follow cs benchmark it's a very popular one okay so in this similar way you can go and you can download for the red hat whatever servers we are using this is better to have this one but most of the organizations they are not following it's better to use this one as well okay so now how we can define this one so after server is created so doing initial setup initial security setup configurations so that it will reduce the attack surface that is called hardening benchmark so very popular one is cs benchmark okay so now what are the two different types of cs benchmark levels we have so one is level 1 second one is level 2 level 2 is a basic configurations and it will not impact that much if attacker will compromise
he will not take data he will take the data but he will not take a confidential of the data so that is meant by this one basic configuration so level 2 these are very important level 2 compulsory we have to implement so anyway everything we have to implement but these are all complicated one difficult one or advanced one so we have to implement level 2 compulsory compulsory we have to implement because it has a more impact more impact and risk so here also we will put less impact and less risk so basic configuration level 1 is a basic configuration so if we attack if are nothing but level 1 it will provide only so basic configuration related setups so it will provide less impact and less risk as per the attacker point of view and level two are a difficult one, advanced one. So if you don't implement this one, we have more impact and also more risk is involved. There are two types of levels, level one and level two under CS benchmark. Okay. In this similar way, Department of Defense Tick Compliances is a dedicatedly applicable to Navy, Army, Ministry of Defense, okay, and so on. So ANSI is a dedicated to France, French government, Singapore, even India also, I think they have they are following a CIS benchmark only. So it's a globally accepted benchmark. CS is a globally accepted benchmark. So that's why most of the people, they will use this one. So even implementing hardening benchmark also, it will reduce the attack surface. How we can prevent Linux server? Yesterday we were discussing. Even we have to put, this is also one of the preventive mechanism. Okay, along with multi-factor authentication, security logging and monitoring, complex passwords. Okay, even along with that one, even hardening benchmark also we have to implement. Okay, so next one is a plugin ID. So before going to plugin ID, yeah, scan template. Scan template meaning here, by default, every vendor is providing a couple of templates. By default, every tool or every vendor is providing scan templates. Example, basic scan, network scan, PCA DSS scan, malware scan, quarterly, PCS scan. Next one, ISO 27001 scan. Next one, Spectra meltdown. Spectra and meltdown. Recently, they added, they added Log4j template also they added. Yeah, so in such a way, we have more than 30 templates we have. So every vendor is supporting all these different types of templates, basic scan, network scan, PCI DSS scan, and so on. So always we will use advanced network scan. So whatever other 29 templates it is providing, entire information is available under the network scan. Okay. So example, as I said, by default, approximate 29 to 30 templates every vendor is providing. So whatever template we are choosing, Advanced Network Scan, this one will provide entire remaining 29 templates information. So that's why always we will use Advanced Network Scan. So next one is we will go now tool-based. So who are all the tools are available? Our vendors are available. So first one is the Nessus. It's a very popular. Most of the organizations, they are using this one only. Tenable. 
right now number one in the market. So Nessus, Tenable is a company, Qualys, next one is a Rapid7, this is also called an Expose. Nexpose is acquired by Rapid7. Now, otherwise, Nexpose is acquired by Rapid7. So, Rapid7 and Nexpose. Tripwire. Next one, Palo Alto. IBM, AppScan, IBM, HP. Uh, next one. So many. So, these are very popular tools. What about open source tool, guys? What is the open source tool we discussed? Open source tool name. Snort. Snort is for IDS IPS. I'm not discussing about IDS IPS. Port scanning tool name. Palo Alto. Palo Alto. It's a commercial. Portigate. Fire. Portigate is a firewall. Why are you bringing firewalls topics here? We are bringing IDS IPS topics here. This is scanning templates we are discussing. Scanning tools only. Second class or third class. Open ports and closed ports. Nmap. Network mapper. So network mapper, it's a open source tool. It will identify what are the ports are open. Okay, so this is open source tool, network mapper, nmap means network mapper. It will identify what all the ports are open. All these are commercials. Snort is IDS, yes, Snort is open source tool, but is, that is IDS IPS category, but it's not a server scanning tool. Understood, right? So, uh, these so are all open source, uh, we can go for putty also, right? Putty software. Putty is for the logging into Linux server, Unix okay. operating system. Fine, fine. Sir. Okay. Thank you. I will show this one also. Network mapper, it's a pending basically. This one I have to explain in the, uh, I mean, uh, third class itself. It's an open source tool. It can identify what are the ports are open and attacker will use a port scanning mechanism also, correct? What are the ports are open? Is there any critical port is open? And according to that particular port, attacker enter into the organization level. So network mapper. So please download and you can install this one also. And possible you can try to do some of the scannings. Nmap downloader, you can see here. So NMAP is supporting for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and so on. So from here, we have to download NMAP 7.9.2. I'm, I'm pasting here link, NMAP downloader link. So latest version of NMAP tool is 7.9.2. This one we have to download and we have to install. Previously we done so. Uh, so do we need to reinstall again? Yes, previously I told that you can download and you can do the scanning, but I'm not sure you people have done or not. I told that I will practically explain this one. You are right. Fine. So this is the tool. Okay, Nmap, it's for port scanning. So even it's a part of, so what are the ports are open? So that is the tools related. Now coming to licensing. So how these tool licensing can work on? Anyone can guess what is the licensing option? So based on what parameters we can purchase these tools? What is licensing option? What about licensing option of EDR tool? Based on number of endpoints. Yeah, correct. Based on number of how many machines are there, that machines may be your laptop, MacBook, workstation, desktop, and servers. What about uh, firewall licensing option? option? Based on number of servers. Yeah, this is based on number of servers. 
you are right based on number of servers we want to scan or otherwise we'll call it ips every server has ip or host name yeah in our organization level we have 5000 servers are there that means we have to purchase licensing for 5000 based on number of servers if you want to scan according to that one licensing option it is defined okay what is firewall licensing option firewall license how to purchase firewall based on number of sessions based on number of sessions Based on number, number of concurrent VPN sessions. sessions. Concurrent sessions. Based on number of VPN sessions. VPN sessions. VPN concurrent sessions. VPN sessions. VPN concurrent sessions. Number of user end users. Number of end users. Land with. Yes. Number of concurrent VPN sessions. Yes, you are right. So according to that one, we can purchase. That's what. Whenever any tool you are discussing, you can compare with other tools as well. What is licensing option? So already we discussed EDR tool. What is the okay tool licensing? What is the firewall licensing? What is uh, uh, our server licensing or vulnerability management licensing? If you are comparing, then it is easy for you. There is no need to buy hurt anything. So compare with other tools. How this tool is working on? How that particular EDR tool is working on? How SIM tool is working on? You can compare with other tools so that it is easy for you. So licensing is based on here in server level vulnerability management level. So how to purchase our Nessus tool or Qualys tool or Rapid7 tool, how they are making a cost, how they are providing quotation. So respect to vendors, how they are giving quotation to us based on how many servers we have. So if you are providing the server information, total quantity, so including both the combination of Microsoft as well as other operating systems information, then they will provide the total number of cost nothing on price as a quotation. Then we have to pay that particular amount to them and then they will give the respective tool to us. Then we have to go and we have to design and we have to implement. So design and implementation, I will explain evening. Okay, so I have two calls are there from seven to eight, one call is there, eight to nine, another call is there. But as of now, my USA director did not accept that one. So let me try in case is if he's accepted, then I will not take the class. Otherwise, tomorrow morning, I will continue. I will let you know by around uh, 12 o'clock. OK, so that's all for today, guys. So even dedicated to vulnerability management also, we have a lot of opportunities are there. So approximate uh, seven to eight members of my students, they're working on this one also. Vulnerability, very simple guys, only two days class, one, two, that's all. Vulnerability management, only two, see, well, this is the first day. Second day, I will complete theoretical part, second class. Third class, I will show practical tool. Fourth class, I will show you how to do the manual analysis. Four classes, vulnerability management. So a lot of vacancies are available, dedicated to vulnerability management also. Clear, right? So, do you have any queries, guys? Fine, sir. One question. Uh, yep. You said that, uh, like, business owner. Mm. So, so, business owner and stakeholder, uh, I see, uh, like, the same or, like, they're similar for their Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, business owner, sometimes you are working, for, it, it is very from which organization you are doing, working on. You are working for product-based company. And uh, so, stakeholder, nothing but business owner only but you are supporting for client you are a tc you are working for tcs and you are supporting for maybe sba bank so that time stakeholders are different right that's true for the uh, scrum master and for the business analyst so we having mm. like product owner yeah. so in, for the yeah. soap also we having like any person i mean respective person for it yes in this scenario yes both the stakeholder and uh, server owner both are same Fine, sir. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Even in my organization also, I am following uh, Agile and Scrum process only. In mm -hmm. STLC lifecycle, I will provide the total end-to-end -end security. 
So yes, my stakeholders sir. are yeah, all PMOs. You are right. As mm, real say like software development life cycle we follow, right? Like initiation. Yes, correct. Right, 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 right. Separate session is there, right? Yeah. Any Thanks, other sir. questions? Thank yeah. You. You're welcome. Any other queries and questions? Okay, guys, thank you so much. Have a great day. So I will let you know by 12 o'clock whether evening class is there or not. Okay, take care. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you.